<laughs> like I say, good afternoon and welcome to our regularly scheduled since, uh, city council meeting. Might ask if you have any electronic devices that you might silence them at this time so not interrupt our meeting. <laughs> Tonight we're going to have uh, Reverend Baggett from Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church who will be doing our invocation and our pledge. Reverend Baggett. Will you bow with us, please? Father, we come at this time and we come to say thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength, and we thank you for this opportunity to assemble ourselves to take care of the business of the city, place where we reside. We thank you for the, those people that have offered themselves up as servants to serve the city and the citizens of the city. We ask you to continue to bless us, and we thank you for this occasion. We ask you to bless them. Everything we do bring glory to you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. Once again, we say good afternoon and we thank you for participating in, in our city hall meeting. Um, if there's anyone that would like to be heard, make sure you fill out the yellow card, please. And Give it to our clerk and she'll pass it on to us. <laughs> With that being said, uh, we're now open for legislative uh, business. And uh, first thing we have on our agenda is to approve the agenda. Are there any objections against the, the no objections being uh, the agenda is approved. Let the records reflect that um, our, our mayor is in France, hopefully, we'll. representing our city. I haven't heard from him yet, but I'm sure he's... <laughs> Uh, representing our city with our sister city in Norma TA, and that our councilman blocker is absent. But we do have a quorum to carry on the business of the city and we will do so. The agenda being approved and no special presentations, Madam Clerk? No, sir. No reports and presentations. Next we have the approval of minutes. Are there any objections against the approval of the minutes? We have no minutes, sir. No minutes, so they're all approved. <laughs> 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 Okay, moving right along. Mm -hmm. um, next thing we have is a public hearing. And before we get, we get into hearing about that, <clears throat> this city council plan amendment public hearing, uh, city council meeting for September 9th, 2019, concerning comprehensive plan amendments 19-E, <coughs> SR and 19-4 ESR. Ordinance numbers 1715 and 1717 respectively. And concerning ordinance 1718. <clears throat> Pursuant to Article 4, Chapter 102 of the City Code and Florida Statutes, I now declare the public hearing open to receive oral and written comments into the official records concerning the consideration of transmittal and adoption of comprehensive plan amendment 19-3 ESR, 19-4 ESR, and ordinance 1715, 1717, and 1718. We will now receive oral and written comments into official record concerning the consideration of transmittal and adoption of comprehensive plan amendments 19-3 ESR. The adoption of the amendment will be accomplished by the Adoption of Ordinance 1715. <clears throat> For the record, the council asks that all speakers identify themselves by name and address. We also ask the speakers confine their oral remarks to the time allocated and recognized by the chair. Written comments received by the staff shall be presented to the council and excerpts listed in the official minutes. The Community Development Service staff will speak on behalf of the city. I now call upon the city clerk to recite for the record legal notice data provided to the public concerning this public hearing. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, publication of the legal notice for the ordinance was accomplished in the Crestview News Bulletin on Wednesday, August 28, 2019. Thank you. As noted, Comprehensive Plan Amendment 19-3 ESR will be accomplished by ordinance number 1715. And I now ask, <laughs> thank you. I now ask the city clerk to read ordinance by title. Mr. Mayor, ordinance 1715 reads by title, 
an ordinance of the City of Crestview, Florida, amending the future land use element of its adopted comprehensive plan by establishing a new future land use category to be known as the mixed use residential commercial category, providing for revising the future land use map plume to include the category, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for purpose, providing for severability, providing for Scribner's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is a first reading of Ordinance 1715. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I now ask for presentation of staff reports and comments. If any, whether written or verbal, the chair recognizes the community development service staff to present any staff reports or comments. Good evening, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Council. Community development staff has developed in conjunction with the local planning agency and citizens of Crestview a new future land use category. The mixed use residential commercial future land use is designed to serve as a buffer between the downtown core of the city and the larger areas of single family residential development. The new category allows for a mixture of both residential uses and non-residential uses, including low intensity commercial, retail, office space, and public uses. The maximum density is 10 dwelling uh, units per acre before any bonuses are applied, and the maximum floor area ratio is 1.75 for mixed uses. Community development staff hosted a public outreach meeting on this matter with residents of two specific locations deemed appropriate for the new mixed use commercial future land use. The LPA reviewed the approved and approved the request uh, to council on 827 uh, 19 Recommending the transmittal and adoption of 19.3 ESR, the following public comment was received at the meeting. Um, I, I do want to make a note that during the LPA, um, much of the comment was not necessarily focused on, on this proposed text amendment, but instead on the, the subject areas that are involved in the actual future land use amendment but I will read all into to the record now, at least those appropriate. Nitsi Bennett of Habitat for Humanity spoke as a proponent of the matter and stated this was the culmination of six years of working uh, towards this change. Habitat for Humanity has received a grant to build homes but cannot, cannot due to the current zoning of the area. Mr. Kenny Seiler of 497 South Wilson Street spoke as an, as an opponent of the matter and stated that a commercial property he owns would lose value if the type of business he can place on the property is limited. Ms. Cheryl Terry of 402 East Cobb Avenue spoke as an, as an opponent of the matter and stated concern about the small children who are being raised in an area where industry would be brought in. She also expressed concern over difficulty making improvements to her property. Um, those were the uh, public comments from record. This, this is a rather um, heavy uh, amendment and proposed uh, ordinance. If you will bear with me, I will just briefly uh, discuss what's, what staff has, has brought before you today. The, the mixed use residential commercial or MXRC is the proposed future land use. Um, and as I indicated, it was designed to serve as a kind of um, as a buffer area between the downtown core and and what um, I've called in the report kind of um, uh, a, a midtown area um, it will serve as a, um, a, a both a residential and commercial light intensity commercial use area between those um, single-family residential areas and the downtown core um, the, the density is 10 dwelling units per acre um, that is is uh, kind of an in-between what what staff felt was a good fit between what it's currently allowed with the downtown mixed-use future land use the commercial future land use and the the low density and medium density residential land uses in that area they range from 6 to 25 dwelling units an acre um, there are up to 15 dwelling units an acre possible with certain <coughs> bonuses providing sidewalks that aren't required additional landscaping proximity to schools and other commercial establishments. Um, so there is a, a bit of some, some leeway there. The um, mixed use uh, floor area ratio, um, for those who, who don't know the, the term, 
is simply the, the area of gross uh, floor area divided by the, the land area or gross land area of the development site. Um, 1.75 floor area ratio essentially means they can develop 1.75% of the land or 175 percent of the land so in other words you can go up um, with a maximum height of, of 35 feet I believe in that area um, that that's I'm not going to read through this this entire report but I will open it up to you please if you have any any specific questions for me I have a question. When the lady was talking about the children being in the, with what her concern was, has there been any, is, is there any other studies, any other place where this mixed use has happened before and any <coughs> uh, reports or anything that could bring that into focus, whether it's going to be a good thing for us or not? So, so there's two things on that. Um, I do not know of any reports. Um, that that speak specifically to that there are plenty of examples that speak to the exact opposite of that most mixed-use areas including this one mm -hmm. are geared more towards walkability pedestrian friendly facilities mm -hmm. um, that's what I thought when I read that and, and that you, you thought correctly um, and, and I think her concern is valid though not in this instance there is no industry um, being permitted uh, within this zoning district it is like I said for residential and, and light intensity intensity commercial uses. So when you say commercial uses, it's not like a manufacturing company. That's correct. Like yeah, that. office space, mm -hmm. retail, restaurants without drive-throughs, those sort of things. Sort of like bringing the downtown out into the area. Right, or, or mm -hmm. portions of mm -hmm. the downtown, downtown right? right? So mm -hmm. it's it's building the kind of medium, um, you know, like I said, buffer area. Uh, before thank we, uh, yeah. well, thank. Before we go to, uh, and I'll, I'll hear comments from the council. But first, we want to hear from the public, and then we'll come back to the councils. If you can hold your questions until that time. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Thank yeah. you, sir. <clears throat> Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the transmittal comprehensive plan 19-3SR or ordinance 1715? Anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the Transmittal of Comprehensive Plan Amendment 19-3 ESR or Ordinance 1715? Hearing none, I, um, we'll close public input for this portion of the public hearing, except for direct questions by members of the council. And at this time, council questions uh, you may address. Yes, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is actually going to allow us to fix some of the issues that we do have down there. Don't we have um, residential homes in commercial lots? Isn't there a, a shifting and shuffling to where if, if something was to ever happen to that house, say it burnt down, that, that family, for instance, wouldn't be able to rebuild in that current zoning. Under this zoning, it allows the MU to, to you know, that family isn't out without a home then. So certainly some of what you said is, is correct that this specific amendment is for the comp plan only okay. and it doesn't go into that detail however that does set up this this amendment sets up the, the zoning language that would instill those that ability right um, but yet yeah, you're, you're correct there is presently um, a lot of lands in that area that are currently being used as residential um, but their underlying zoning and, and land use are commercial and that would prevent them from um, expanding on non-conforming uses. Anyone else from the coach? Questions? Okay, questions? Thanks. Mr. Chair. Or, yes, sir. One thing I would like to add to this as well is this, this particular change is one that we discussed at, at length during our strategic planning. Um, this, is, this is part of the effort to do what we call smart planning and to create concentric zoning districts. This gives us the opportunity to do that, to move from more commercial uses uh, and transition ourselves into residential uses. And so the development of this zoning district was a gap in our zoning system that really needed to be filled. And, and so that's really what kind of drove this. Uh, and, and so it is absolutely consistent with your strategic plan. Okay. And um, let it be noted also that the goal towards working towards 
is like uh, you stated where people can rebuild their homes mm -hmm. but keep in mind that we're it's not going to be geared towards large industry uh, mainly like maybe a restaurant a barbershop maybe a doctor's office uh, something along that line uh, no no fast food drive-ins uh, for for this area so those are some of the, some of the things that this uh, is geared towards. I just want to bring the pub, make the public aware of that. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you, sir. <coughs> um, <coughs> council, I not call for um, action by by the by the council. I move to adopt Ordinance 1715 on first reading and send a second reading. Do I have a second? Second. No, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think you also want to authorize the mayor to transmit the proposed comprehensive plan amendment to the Department of Economic Opportunity. Okay. Mr. Uh, Rinch. I revise to adopt Ordinance 1715 on first reading and move to second reading to authorize the mayor to transmit the proposed comprehensive plan amendment to the Florida Department of Economic <laughs> Opportunity for review. Do you second that uh, <laughs> amended? Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Uh, the mo there's a motion to and a second to adopt ordinance number 1715 on the first reading, move to second reading, and to authorize the mayor to transmit the proposed comprehensive plan amendments to the Florida Department of Economic <coughs> Opportunity for review and comment. I now call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposes? Hearing none, mo a motion is approved. Thank you, sir. We next have Ordinance 1717. And I'll be right with you on that. Make sure I got the right ordinance. Uh, I just want to let the public know that we have quite a few <laughs> ordinances to go through tonight, so bear, bear with us. Uh, and with several pages on each one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, On ordinance 1717, we will now receive. Well, that won't work. That's it. Madam Clerk. Yes, er, there, can, that's where you need to start. <coughs> right there. Can we. Uh, we will now receive oral and written comments into official records concerning the consideration of transmittal adoption of Comprehensive Plan Amendment 19 4 ESR. The adoption of the amendment will be accomplished by the adoption of ordinance 1717. I now call upon the city clerk to recite for the record legal notice data provided to the public concerning this public hearing. Mr. Mayor, publication of the legal notice for the ordinance was accomplished in the Crestview News Bulletin on Wednesday, August the 28th, 2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. As noted, Comprehensive Plan Amendment 19-4 ESR will be accomplished by ordinance number 1717. And now, uh, and now I ask the clerk to read the ordinance by title. Mr. Mayor, ordinance number 1717 reads by title. An ordinance of the city of Crestview, Florida, amending its adopted comprehensive plan, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for purpose, providing for changing the future land use designation from low density residential downtown misuse public lands and the commercial future land use categories to the mixed use residential commercial MX RC future land use category on approximately 45.6 acres, more or less, in section 17, Township 3 North, Range 23 West, providing for future land use map amendment, providing for severability, providing for Scribner's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1717. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I now ask for presentation of staff reports and comments, if any, whether written or verbal. The chair recognizes the community development service staff to present any staff reports or comments. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, community development services staff has proposed comprehensive plan amendment 19-4 ESR. This amendment reflects the future land use change of approximately 45.6 acres of land consisting of 158 parcels of land generally bounded by Oakdale Avenue West, Walnut Avenue West, Lloyd Street North and South, and Wilson Street North and South. If adopted, the amendment 
will be accomplished by ordinance number 1717 and will impose the mixed use residential commercial MXRC future land use upon the identified area. This is, uh, as I indicated um, with Councilman Rincic's question, this is the um, adoption of that future land use on, the, the, on these lands. Um, and it, it will um, change what's currently there and allow for the mixture of uses, as I've indicated. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the transmittal of Comprehensive Plan Amendment 19-4 ESR of Ordinance 1717? Anyone in the audience like to speak for or against this ordinance? Anyone in the audience wants to speak for or against? Hearing none, I close the public input for this portion of the public hearing, except for direct questions by the member of council. No. Okay, thank you. I now call for action by council. I move to adopt Ordinance 1717 on first reading, move to second reading, and to authorize the mayor to transmit the proposed comprehensive plan amendment to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity for review and comment. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. The motion is there's a motion and a second to adopt Ordinance 1717 on the first reading and move to second reading and to authorize the mayor to transmit the proposed comprehensive plan amendment to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity for review and comment. Now I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposes? <coughs> Bring on the ayes have it. And it's so booed. Next we have Ordinance 1718. And if you give me a minute to find 1718. You can only screen so fast on these <laughs> without running past them. <clears throat> 1718, we will not receive oral and written comments in the official records concerning the adoption of the amendment of ordinance 1718. Madam Clerk, uh, will you read the amendment, uh, ordinance please? And the, the legal notice, publication of the legal notice for the ordinance was accomplished in the Crestview News Bulletin on Wednesday, August the 28th, 2019. Thank you, now I call upon you to recite, uh, to uh, read ordinance, um, 1718. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 1718 reads by title, an ordinance of the city of Crestview, Florida, providing for the rezoning of 45.6 acres, more or less, of real property located in Section 17, Township 3 North, Range 23 West, from the commercial C1 single and multifamily R2 and the single family dwelling R1 zoning districts to the mixed-use neighborhood commercial district zoning MX-NC providing for authority, providing for the updating of the Crestview zoning map, providing for several ability, providing for Scrivener's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 1718. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I now ask for presentation of staff reports and comments, if any, whether written or verbal. The chair recognized the community development service staff to present any staff reports or comments. Good evening again. Uh, I'm going to, to kind of uh, address something that I think uh, the council should be aware of. Um, based on, on Florida statute, a zoning uh, change of this nature, meaning initiated by the city of this size, um, has to undergo two public hearings. This is, is the first. You haven't heard the actual zoning district language that we are actually proposing the MXRC, um, which comes later in this gigantic packet. Um, so I kind of wanted to, to give up questions, maybe by the council, to ask me questions about the actual zoning designation or zoning language that is being proposed. I don't know if that's appropriate, or if I should just go through this, this activity and I can address questions later. How do you guys want me to do this? If you could go through it briefly, and then uh, we'll give the public an opportunity, and then we'll come to our council for questioning. Okay, sounds good. So the, the MXRC uh, language 
is exactly what I've indicated um, just recently. It is the zoning district that will implement the new future land use district. Um, in this language, you can see there are um, setbacks. There are uh, the uh, the uh, excuse me floor area ratio is is addressed. Um, all your allowed uses, all your development standards, your special uses. Um, the zoning language will will is very specific. It, it breaks the the comp plan language down to 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 a T. Um, it, 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 and it is driven by the same idea, allowing for, for a transition area. Um, any incompatible uses are addressed through buffering and other um, recognized transitioning uh, methods. Um, that, that's it in a nutshell. I can get more specific if you'd like. It's, it's Nothing else. Well, we'll, we'll give the opportunity to the public in case they <coughs> want to do that. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the adoption of Ordinance 1718? Anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the adoption of Ordinance 1718? Hearing none, this time I close the public control for this portion of the public hearing except for direct questions by members of council. Council, questions? Yes, sir. Has the staff identified any type of, uh, I mean, you mentioned setbacks and stuff of that nature, requirements that, that we don't already have? Do they already uh, align with all the, the remainder of the setbacks, like, et cetera, that, that mean, we have throughout the rest of the community? Or is um, there anything that's shining on, on this, this new use area? So, so based on not industry standard, but mixed use zones typically allow for very limited or um, condensed setbacks. Um, so you're looking from a, a zero lot line to, to 10 foot. What this language um, has proposed is a 10 foot setback um, that, that was, was based on the great majority of existing structures in the, this, this area. Um, they're all age structures. They were all, um, not all, but many of them were built at a time when there weren't setback requirements, and many of them are, are 10 foot or, or even some less, but we didn't want to go, go too far down. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that is it's a, a, a significant difference from outside of that. So the, the downtown core, you're looking at zero lot lines, or the you're not looking at zero lot lines. A new structure would actually have 25 foot setback Additionally, residential structures um, outside of the zone are also 25 or 20 or, or even more in an agricultural district. Um, so, so 10 will be the smallest setbacks um, allowed in the city. Any other questions from council? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Here, here no... Um, no further questions from council. I now ask for action by council. I move to adopt ordinance 1718 on first reading and move to second reading. Have a motion to have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. There's a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 1718 on the first reading and move to the second reading. And I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. And the ordinance is passed. I now declare the public hearing is closed. Um, at this time, is there anyone in the public who would like to speak on anything that's uh, on the council's agenda for tonight? Anyone in the audience would like to speak on anything that we have that's on the agenda for tonight? Hearing none, we'll go to the consent agenda. Ask for action by council on the consent agenda. Hearing no objections. Hearing no objections, the consent agenda is approved. Yes. <laughs> um, we have no resolutions, no ordinances on the second reading for tonight. 
So now we start getting in that long list. Hang on, we gotta get there. <laughs> okay. First we have Ordinance 1716, Land Development Code Amendment, Section 102 through 129. Yes, Madam Clerk, can you read uh, Ordinance 1716, please? Yeah. Ordinance number 1716 reads by title, An Ordinance of the City of Crestview, Florida, providing for authority, providing for amendments to Article 7, Land Use, Type, Density, Intensity, Zoning, and Regulatory Controls of Chapter 102 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Crestview, Florida, providing for amendments to Section 102-129, Districts and Boundaries, establishing and adding the zoning regulations necessary to implement a neighborhood commercial district, providing for severability, providing for scrivener's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for appeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 1716. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, staff's already up. We're not here from staff. <laughs> I shouldn't have sat down. I thought there was a couple items in between. Um, so uh, that has to be a dead horse here, but um, this is exactly what we just discussed. Um, this is the adoption or the first reading of for the adoption of the changes to the land development. Oh, just a minute. Yes, sir. Uh, what about 10-1, uh, the 10-2, I'm sorry, the Main Street application? That's the consent. That was under consent. Was all part we, of were, consent. we already approved that. Okay. One and two were both part of consent. <laughs> all right. They were on the way. Okay. You want to backtrack on that? Yeah, we're good? Oh, no, yeah. no, okay. no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you can continue, please, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, so so as, as I indicated, this is the, the um, these are the changes to the Land Development Code, adopting that mixed-use uh, residential commercial zoning uh, district. I can go over this in, in detail if you'd like. If you have any questions um, concerning any um, any aspect of the language itself, I'd be more than happy to address them. Okay. Council, any questions or discussions? Hearing none, I ask for action by council. Move to adopt Ordinance 1716, our first reading, and send a second reading. We have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Um, that we adopt the city uh, <coughs> ordinance uh, 1760 on the first reading and sent to second reading. Here, no discussion. We're ready for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. Motion carries. Um, next, we have ordinance 1689, comprehensive plan amendments 19 S3. -S Madam Clerk, if you can read uh, ordinance 1689, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 1689 reads by title, an ordinance of the city of Crestview, Florida, amending its adopted comprehensive plan, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for purpose, providing for changing the future land use designation from Okaloosa County mixed use future land use category to public lands future land use category on approximately 2.11 acres more or less in section 35, Township 3 North, range 24 West, providing for future land use map amendment, providing for severability, providing for scrivener's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1689. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, Council, any questions? No. Uh, question asked for action by Council. I move to adopt Ordinance 1689 on first reading and send to second reading. Second. Have a motion and a second that um, we, on Ordinance uh, 1689, that we have uh, lost my thought, but anyway, uh, that we uh, approve sure. a motion uh, for a 1689 Comprehensive Plan Amendment 19 H3. Uh, are there any questions? And for that, we move it to, I accept on the first reading, move to the second reading. Any questions? Now I ask for action by council. We have a motion? We already had a motion. We had a second. Uh, we're up yeah. for, okay. So all I need now is, the, I, I, I'm glad I got y'all over here to keep me in line. I think we do have a comment from the audience. I'm sorry, I didn't see a hand. If you can, if you can please come to the podium. So 
some of us are a little hard of hearing. If you come up here and just state your name and address, please, ma'am, even though I know who you are. Yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Phyllis Enzer, and um, I, I have a house on Car Drive in Crespi here. And I, the only question I have, and I had met with Stephen here, was um, this particular item, 13.2 and 13.3 and 13.10, we did get notified. I thank you guys for that. We got our letters. I, I did ask for a copy of the application because I didn't know what it was for, and I haven't been able to get that. So that was my only question. Can I get a copy of what this person was applying for? Okay, um, we can provide an application. I think the question or the confusion is that there, the original application was made under a previous owner. Okay. And so we, I think there was a question, maybe did you ask the question as to whether we could provide one with the current owner? No, with the original, because this is going back to 1689, which okay. was we, with we the former owner. Okay, we can get that Okay. You. Yes, ma'am. Is this with a different owner of this particular ordinance? No, no, the, the, the it is. This is the city's ordinance. This is the city's this is a city. This was the city one. Okay, oh, but the yeah. other the other two. Yeah, which she's is a little ahead. This is the one thirteen point three. This is thirteen point two is owned by the city. Correct. Thirteen point three and thirteen ten. Those are my questions for those. Okay. Correct. So I'm ahead of you. All right. Thirteen point two and thirteen point three are the city yeah. parcel. <laughs> okay. I apologize. So then mm -hmm. we'll, we can take up we'll take up those questions during that piece of property. Okay. That way we can keep the record straight. I apologize. Right. You know, I apologize for not seeing your hand. I, 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 okay, we, we got a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposes have the same sign. No opposes, motion carries. Uh, next we have ordinance 1690, rezoning of 2.11 acres on Point Center <coughs> Road. <coughs> Madam Clerk, if you can read the ordinance, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 1690 reads by title, an ordinance of the city of Crestview, Florida, providing for the rezoning of 2.11 acres, more or less, of real property located in Section 35, Township 3 North, Range 24 West, from the Okaloosa County Mixed Use Zoning District to Public Lands District Zoning P, providing for authority, providing for the updating of the Crestview Zoning Map, providing for several ability, providing for Scribner's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1690. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have staff ready. Um, staff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is the, uh, the change to the zoning designation of the, the lands that you just um, accepted the comp plan change for. Um, this this go into public lands for a, a public use of a water tank uh, provided by the city to serve that uh, serve the community. Okay. No question. Any questions? Mm -hmm. As for action by council, move to adopt 169 ordinance 1690 on first reading and send a second reading. Second. So, a motion and a second that we uh, adopt ordinance 1690 on the first reading and send to the second reading. Any question discussion? Hearing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposes have the same time, no opposes, and so motion carries. Uh, ordinance 1699, uh, Comprehensive Plan Amendments 19S5. Madam Clerk, if you read the ordinance, please. Ordinance number 1699 reads by title. An ordinance of the City of Crestview, Florida, amending its adopted comprehensive plan, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for purpose, providing for changing the future land use designation from Okaloosa County Rural Residential Future Land Use Category to Low Density Residential Future Land Use Category on approximately 1.04 acres more or less in Section 31 Township 4 North Range 23 West, providing for yeah. future land use amendment, providing for several ability, providing for Scrivener's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1699. Thank you. Um, staff, if you want to repeat yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Since you said it, yes. Um, this actually, if this looks familiar to you, the council has just reviewed this uh, relating to, to its annexation. Uh, Mr. Mr. Capps um, is the applicant. He has a single family dwelling on site now. He is not proposing to make any changes uh, to, the, to the land itself. Uh, and this is just wrapping up the, the annexation. Thank you. Uh, any questions from council? Hearing none, I call now call for action by council. 
I move to adopt ordinance 1699 on first reading and send to second reading. I have a motion, second. we have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second uh, <clears throat> to adopt ordinance 1699 on the first reading and move to the second reading. Now call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Ordinance 1700. Madam Clerk, if you read Ordinance 1700, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 1700 reads by title. An ordinance of the City of Crestview, Florida, providing for the rezoning of 1.04 acres, more or less, of real property, located in Section 31, Township 4 North, Range 23 West, from the Okaloosa County Rural Residential Zoning District to the Single Family Dwelling District Zoning R1A, Providing for authority, providing for the updating of the Crestview zoning map, providing for severability, providing for Scribner's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1700. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Staff? Again, this is um, the, the same lands that were recently annexed, and the comp plan was just recently read and moved to second reading. This will uh, provide for the use that he currently has on site. Again, there is no um, application or suggestion of, of any change to that use in the near future. Any questions by council? There are no questions. I ask for action by council. I move to adopt ordinance 1700 on first reading and send to second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 1700 on the first reading. Move to the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I uh, now call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposes? No opposes. It passes. Ordinance passed. Hey, um, ordinance 1702. Madam Clerk, if you read ordinance 1702, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Ordinance <laughs> <I didn't laughs> number 1702 reads by title. An ordinance of the City of Crestview, Florida, amending its adopted comprehensive plan, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for purpose, providing for changing the future land use designation from Okaloosa County Low Density Residential Future Land Use Category to Medium Density Residential Future Land Use Category on approximately 0 0.70 acres, more or less, in Section 21. Township 3 North, Range 23 West, providing for future land use map amendment, providing for severability, providing for Scribner's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 1702. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Staff, any comments? Yeah, again, this, this property has recently undergone the annexation process. It, it probably looks familiar to you. Um, the, the applicant has proposed uh, three uh, or four dwelling units on it, four I believe, um, in existing lots. Um, it, it is a part of a subdivision. Uh, there have been no <coughs> comments received from staff regarding the annexation, comp plan, rezoning, or the development. Thank you. Any questions from council? Hearing none, I ask for action by council. I move to adopt ordinance 1702 on first reading and send a second reading. A motion to have a second. A motion and a second uh, to adopt ordinance 1702 on the first reading and move to second reading. Any questions? I ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. Motion is carried. Um, I'll go to. Next we have ordinance. 1703. We're almost to the end, people. Almost to the end. Madam Clerk, can we read Ordinance 1703, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 1703 reads by title An ordinance of the City of Crestview, Florida, providing for the rezoning of 0 0.70 acres, more or less, of real property located in Section 21, Township 3 North, Range 23 West, from the Okaloosa County Single Family R1 Zoning District. To the single and multifamily dwelling district <coughs> zoning R2, providing for authority, providing for updating of the Crestview zoning map, providing for severability, providing for Scribner's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting codes, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1703. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Any, any comments from staff? Uh, I just wanted to say that, um, again, this is um, applying the 
appropriate city zoning designation to these lands. Um, the R2 will allow the developer to, um, to build what he has um, not applied for but has proposed. Um, additionally, city zoning in that area mimics the R2 designation. It is, it is appropriate and compatible. Any question from council? Now I ask for action by council. I move to adopt ordinance 1703 on first reading and send to second reading. Second. Have a motion and a second to uh, adopt ordinance 1703 on the first reading. Move to second. Any questions, discussions? Hearing none, I now call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposes? No opposes. The ayes have it and the motion carries. Now, uh, this is for the, for ordinance 1703. What what's just been proposed? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, according to code, uh, 25 uh, peak PM traffic w would uh, provide for um, additional staff research and and potentially some some facility upgrades. However, that this uh, development proposed development does not meet that when an actual development application is made and staff determines that there is a need um, for any uh, facility improvements they will be addressed at that time okay, Thank you. okay. Um, 1706 madam Kirby, read uh, ordinance 1706 mr. mayor ordinance number 1706 reads by title an ordinance annexing to the city of Crestview 1.04 plus or minus acres of contiguous lands located in section 4 township 3 north range 23 west and being described as set forth herein providing for authority providing for land description providing for boundary providing for land use and zoning designation providing for amendment to the base land use and zoning maps providing for a comprehensive plan amendment Providing for filing with the circuit clerk of circuit court of Okaloosa County, the chief administrative officer of Okaloosa County, and the Florida Department of State. Providing for severability, providing for Scrivener's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting ordinances, and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance 1706. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have any comments from staff? Yes, this is a, a new annexation. You, you guys have not uh, seen this project before. Uh, Miss Benz has made application. Uh, she is the property owner of, of the land and an adjacent parcel uh, within the city. Uh, she has requested a, uh, a small scale comprehensive plan amendment and zoning designation to follow the annexation. Um, she has requested both commercial um, uh, future land use and zoning on these lands. Um, it, it is appropriate. Um, it, uh, there is no uh, proposed development that, that I am aware of. Um, I, I do have to say LPA uh, approved this at its last meeting. However, th the, there was some uh, contentious uh, debate during the meeting. Um, I've read through the minutes myself and, and I can't um, find anything that I would consider um, substant substantive as far as um, an opponent or proponent uh, comment. Um, that's uh, that's all I have for this. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, this Question. is just an yeah. annexation, right? Yes, ma'am. We're not even approving development or anything like that. That's correct. So it's just whatever's there, he wants to be in the city. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? Bring none. I ask for action by council. Mr. May I make a motion that we accept uh, ordinance 1706 on first reading and send it to second reading? Second. I have a motion and a second that we <coughs> approve ordinance 1706 on the first reading. Move to the second reading. Any questions, discussion? Hearing none, I now call for action. I mean, I call for a motion by council. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposes? No opposes, and the motion carries. <clears throat> ordinance 1709. Madam Clerk, you read Ordinance 1709, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 1709 reads by title, an ordinance annexing to the city of Crestview, Florida, 3.59 plus or minus acres of contiguous lands 
located in section 21 township 3 north range 23 west and being described as set forth herein providing for authority providing for filing with the clerk of circuit court of Okaloosa county the chief administrative officer of Okaloosa county and the florida department of state providing for severability providing for scrivener's errors providing for liberal interpretation providing for repeal of conflicting ordinances and providing for an effective date this is the first reading of ordinance number 1709 thank you madam clerk Steph, any comments or? Yeah, I, I, I'll make a few. Uh, the city of Crestview <coughs> owns this property. It is a right of way. Um, it, this report may look um, different from the others because there is no proposed future land use or zoning changes uh, because they're not required for a right of way. Um, this is um, essentially a, a bit of cleanup that was missed in, in the past and um, to ensure that, that the right-of-way is in the city. It is our right-of-way. We do maintain it. Um, additionally, this is part of a, a, a current grant application for an ALF that, that is situated on Patriot Lane um, and, and will potentially be um, improved, the, the entire right-of-way, in, in the future. That is, we hope. That is all, stuff. Thanks, sir. Questions? Any no questions, I ask for action by council. I move to adopt ordinance 1709 on first reading and send it to the second reading. A motion to have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second that we adopt ordinance 1709 on first reading and move a second. Uh, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposes? No opposes. The motion carries. And the last one. <laughs> I see all those smiles out there. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Clerk, we meet our last ordinance for tonight, Ordinance 1721. I will be happy to, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> ordinance number 1721 reads by title, an ordinance annexing to the City of Crestview, Florida, 62.5 plus or minus acres of contiguous lands located in sections 35 and 36, Township 3 North, Range 24 West, and being described as set forth herein, providing for authority, providing for land description, providing for boundary, providing for land use and zoning designation, providing for amendment to the base land use and zoning maps, providing for a comprehensive plan amendment, providing for filing with the clerk of circuit court of Okaloosa County, the chief administrative officer of Okaloosa County and the Florida Department of State, providing for severability, providing for Scribner's errors, providing for liberal interpretation, providing for repeal of conflicting ordinances and providing for an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 1721. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Staff, any comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a few. Uh, this this project again probably looks uh, very familiar uh, to some of you. Um, it is it has come before you multiple times. It um, has gone <coughs> to you um, through uh, 1654, which was initially um, staff's efforts to to annex the land. Um, it it has gone to the state as a comprehensive plan amendment. Has come back with no comment from the state, and then we are bringing it to you again today. Um, based on um, public comment indicating that um, there was no notice sent out at the time. Staff could not verify if this was done according to law. This is our effort to um, uh, rectify that potential oversight. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Have we had any uh, oppose or, or for or against since the, the Issues been taken care of with the notice. Um, the staff has received public comment. Um, it, it's not clear to staff if if that comment is is opposed or proposed uh, to the to the proposed annexation. Um, however, uh, the, the public comment has has been um, driven by the fact that um, notice was improperly um, provided initially. So there, I'm sorry. So there really wasn't any other comment before. It was just that this wasn't given given in the right way to get the public there to comment. That's that's my understanding. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, before we move further, there's somebody in the audience who wanted to make comments on this one right here. Miss Inzer, I believe this this may be the one that you were seeking to have comment mm -hmm. on. We want to make sure we provide you the opportunity. I apologize for the confusion at the beginning. I think we both were off by a couple of yeah. <laughs> You're a little earlier. There's yeah. a lot of ordinances. Yeah. 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 And it may be no. just a matter of process. Sure. Because uh, originally it was, it was an application by 
the former owner. Right. This application, my question is, is this by a different owner now? So, so what we what we did, um, and <coughs> Stephen covered this uh, a little bit, is um, Ms. Enzer expressed to us concerns that we did not meet the requirements for public participation. Um, we can't prove or disprove that we did, um, but you know we believe what Ms. Enzer came and told us that she did not receive notice, and so in an abundance of caution. We re-advertised this particular ordinance to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to, to comment on it. That being said, it had already been through the process all the way up through the state, and annexation had occurred and is recognized by the county. So when I think in, so, I think you came in and spoke with staff about is there a new application for this after um, consulting with council on it. There's no need for a new application because the annexation already occurred. What we are trying to do is is give the opportunity for all the comments so <coughs> that there's some form of a challenge that we can all go back and say, okay, you know, and let the court decide as ends up, it ends up what happens. And I'll let, and I can let the attorney speak further to it, but I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay. And the question about the application was so that we, the public, would know why are they annexing. Right. Just a simple, you know, why are they annexing? So we figure if we looked at the application, but as he just said, with the application comes proposed, but they're really not applying for anything except for annexation. Right? Correct. Okay. Right. So and this particular action is, like I said, in an abundance of caution to clear up the original request to annex. I understand. That. So, so as we walk through the development order process, there will absolutely be an, a, a, a crystal clear application for what is proposed to be developed. There. So there is not a new application. This is the original one from the former owner, and we're just going through this process just for the hearing. To clarify, to make okay. sure that we that we provided every opportunity for public comment. I have my question to answer. Okay. Any any other question? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, Thank you. Mr. Turn, did you want to make any comments? Oh no. Between the dialogue, they actually got it. It's the original application that okay. we're just cleaning up the the, the paper and cleaning up the ordinance to correct the errors from the past. Okay. Yes, sir. And if I understand it, the the development order has not came past us. Is the development order in the works, or, or is there anything? We do not currently have an application for a development order. Okay. So yeah, there will be ample time to to for the public to to be for or against when that time comes. Yeah, if I can clarify, just in my own mind too, annexation is just that we're bringing the bringing property into the city limits. It doesn't change what the property is going to be used for or, or that there's any plan for anything to be used for. It just really brings it in. Now, if the owner does decide at some point that they want to develop it in some way, shape, or form, that then has another process that they have to come through, which will again go through the, the process uh, of hearing and approval, if I'm, if I'm correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And additionally, I, I did want to say that when we staff receives a development order, we do post the property to notify the public that it is in fact being considered Correct. and to give them uh, opportunity to speak. So basically it goes through this whole process again, but this time for actually development, not just anything. <coughs> yes, sir. It, well, let me ask this question, Stephen. Would this be approval at, in the current code, would this be approval at the council's level for the development order? Yes, yes, yes sir. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. In yeah, it'll come through this whole process again, but that time for a development it, issue, not just and a And I will say this, for, for Ms. Enzer's sake and for those around this property, uh, and we discussed this when it, when it first came back before you, um, we can't prove whether we advertise it or not. And so, like I said, we're doing it in the abundance of caution, but she has every right, and we want to make sure we afford her that opportunity. Absolutely. And we'll do it again. Um, but, but the request to know what the proposed development is is something that, that she has the right to know. Absolutely. So we appreciate you coming out. Every citizen has the right to know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No other questions? I'll ask for action by council. I move that we, uh, the city council, adopt ordinance 1721 on first reading and send to second reading. Got a second. Mo a motion and second that we adopt ordinance 1721 on the first reading, move to the second reading. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed have the same sign? No opposes, motion carries. Whew. Ordinance 225,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that ends our ordinances for 1721, um, our last ordinance of the night. And I, I'm going to call on our city manager just to give a brief thing.
I, 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 if he can briefly explain why we have to go through all these orders. Some people say, why you have to go there? But there's a reason and a state. Well, I'm going to let him, if you don't mind, tell him right quick why we have to go through these ordinances. All right. So, um, sure. Uh, I love pop quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> so each of these ordinances address different issues or different uh, steps through the development and or annexation process. So the last one that we talked about was when someone is annexing into the city. That's the first step to become a part of the incorporated city. The next step is that uh, you assign what's called a comprehensive plan or future land use designation to it, which determines the long range planning designation. It's a broad scoping of what you could potentially do on that property. And the third step is to assign a zoning to it, which is a short range planning document. So in the big picture, it may be residential property with all sorts of different options. When you get to the zone, at the comprehensive plan level, at the uh, zoning level, it's much more specific about what you can and cannot do. Then the final step for, like for in particular, this piece of property that was just discussed, being that it's over 60 acres, I believe, it will be a development order before anything occurs on the property. During that process is when you determine, land use and zoning set the maximum that you can do on the property. But once we address uh, compatibility, traffic, and issues like that, that will actually determine what actually can accomplish on that property. Exactly. So it's at that stage that we take it into account. Um, like I said, though, uh, the statute does allow for and, and say that if, if there's a specific project that's being proposed as a result of the annexation, it is discussed at the time of the annexation. Um, and, and all of that more likely occurred long before I got here when this all started. But we did, you know, we, we appreciated uh, the, the request and wanted to make sure that we were as clear in, as possible. The point of this, uh, uh, Mr. Hayes, is so that um, the public has an opportunity to participate in the process. It's called due process. We thank you for that. And also, this is a, 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 a state requirement that we go yeah. through the process, so we have to make sure we do that. If not, uh, citizens can come back and whatever to us that they might think they can legally get away with. So I just want him to brief you in some case some people might have a question of why we sit here and uh, went through 13 ordinances tonight. There was a purpose that we have to follow. With that being said, we're going to move to the next item, which is our EAP. And uh, that's the Employees Assistant Program, EAP for short. But um, our city uh, manager, Mr. Bullock, will Certainly. On that. Uh, what you have before you is a request to enter into an agreement to provide employee, an employee assistance program. This is something that City of Crestview has not had up till now. Um, but with an organization of this size, it is definitely something that we want to have, especially when you deal with uh, or when you have agencies inside the organization that provide this, the things that our police and fire agencies provide. Um, primarily, those are the ones that usually do it. Uh, they deal with uh, things like fatalities and stuff like that. And what this does is this provides us an agreement with a, an outside agency that will provide for them um, the you know necessary either whether it's counseling or just someone to talk to in the event of something occurring. It also locks up for us uh, the opportunity to do larger scale uh, things like that should should something negative happen. Um, uh, God forbid, uh, it allows us to bring this firm in and they'll meet with us as a group and, and do things like that. Uh, in addition, you know, our responsibility as employers is to um, do everything that we can do to provide for the health and safety of our employees. And sometimes things go on, you know, I can, I can um, you know, relate that you never know what life's going to throw you in. So we want to provide for our employees an opportunity to have someone to talk to so that they can uh, be healthy and productive as they provide the service to us. One thing I will say on this staff report, it says that, it, that the maximum um, cost for this service was 14400 That's actually um, not the maximum cost. That's what we estimate to be the maximum based on what we thought may get some use. And that's a very liberal number. Um, however, uh, the way that it works is it's $60 per session and we'll pay up to $240 worth of sessions. Um, and, and so we, using that number, we looked at when, how many times we probably would have either recommended or required it, because uh, there are times that we'll require it, and, and figured that at the most we'd be spending about 14400 and we have budgeted for this purpose. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have, but staff is respectfully requesting that you allow us to get this contract uh, signed and, and put it into action. Any questions? I, yes, ma'am. I don't really have a question, I have a comment. Uh, the, the 
every place I've ever worked, we've had an EAP. Right. And uh, and it's been utilized by a lot of us in the past. So I think this is something that's really needed. And I also think that the overall cost is pretty low because I know most is. counseling is $100 an hour, sometimes more than that. So they're giving us a fair you know, assessment or a fair price. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, with that, uh, no questions asked. Action by council. Uh, uh, I move that we accept the city council that we approve the contract as submitted and submit it to the mayor for signature. So, so and a second? Yes. Um, that we approve the contract as submitted and submit it to the mayor for signatures. Yes. Now, ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposes? No opposes, and the motion carries. At this time here, we'll open the floor to comments from the audience. Anything that you would like to address the council on, uh, please address the podium. Give your name and your address in uh, three minutes. If you desire more, please uh, let me know before you start and we'll see if we can accommodate you. Anyone like to uh, speak to the council this time on any issue that you might want to? Anyone in the audience want to speak on any issue that, yes, ma'am, you step up and give us your name and address, please, ma'am. I am DeAndrea Haynes. I live at 111 Citadel Lane here in Crestview. And I have three things, I guess. The first is I was driving down to this meeting and I thought I had already crossed the train track, but I hadn't. And I wanted to know who is responsible for the electricity poles and letting them know that there is one that is literally leaning to the side right now like it is the arms to a railroad. Um, to a railroad crossing. Um, that is a hazard for whoever is driving on that street. That is a hazard for the children that ride their bikes on that street. So I don't know who to get that information to, but they need to go out and look at that immediately because if there's something on the foundation that has unearthed that, then that could be something that comes back on a whole lot of people. So that's one thing. Okay, but before you move on to the next, yeah. we're going to see if we can answer. We reported it. Okay. Um, Okay, and 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 let them know it's it's not the city's uh, understood crossing, but uh, it's, it's been reported. It's a hazard still. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Thank you so we, for bringing it to us, and we'll get it to the right people. Exactly. That's the, that's the first thing. Okay. The second thing would be when we're sitting here listening to the ordinances, etc. Um, for the layman, which would be me, someone that wants to know more about that. To get two lines, basically, in layman's term as to what you're discussing, where this actually is, because the people in the audience, I'll just speak for me, we may not know the zone that you're speaking of. We've come because we want to become more knowledgeable about what's going on in the city of Crestview. However, we may not be there. So just a two-liner on this is what we're discussing, this is what it is, this is where it is. The location would be beneficial to someone like me that wants to know more about that. I understand annexation and things of that such, but just to know a little bit more because I'm not familiar with the zones or the areas that we're speaking about. So that would be beneficial. The last part that if I we, have. We'd like, can we answer two and then we'll move on? Absolutely. All okay, right. Um, I, I can answer that, but I'm going to let our city manager answer. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> If, uh, if, if you look on the city webpage, I'm there. And uh, th uh, under agendas, and if you look, pull up the agenda for today, you'll find 178 pages. 253. Of well, 200. <laughs> I, I'm, I only read 178. I guess I skipped over some. But if you, if you go through that, it will give you uh, uh, maps of the area, it will give you the streets, and it will give you the findings by staff concerning that. But, um, to not to not to expedite the meeting, which we you know, but the, if we'd read all those two hundred and how many pages? Two fifty three. Two fifty three. We'd be here another few hours, but but we can. Uh, it's it's on the city webpage. It is posted at least. Yeah, that, that being said, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, we can with with this type of participation. I think it would be beneficial. We'll we'll work on having the map show so that so that there's at least a location map on these. I think it's a reasonable yeah, request. Yeah. We'll work on it. We'll, we'll just put the it. we'll just put the map right after the ordinance is yeah. read and that way we'll go to it. We have got this much participation I think was Oh yeah. Beneficial. That's all. We'll do it. Yeah. They said and they I agree get. with you because one of the things that we all look at when we see where we're scrolling is we're mm -hmm. looking for the map too. Absolutely. Yes. Because mm -hmm. when someone says North 36, 20, whatever it is, they say, we don't know what that is. Well, so we're, we're over here busily drinking. Where's the map of that? So we mm -hmm. can see it too. And yeah. the other thing so. is it's not in the order that you're speaking of them. 
Yep. So I went That's from good. 74 to 122 to here to there because they're not in sequential order. Okay. They're not sequential, the, the but they're in the order that we're going to cover them. Is that so? They're in the order yeah, that you're going to cover oh. them. Yeah, it, they weren't. I don't. There's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but that's, a, that's a good uh, point, and, and we'll well, definitely take. I'll, I'll, I'll He'll fill okay. me in. All right. So the last thing is, I'm excited to hear that the city is going to get an EAP program. Like Ms. Cynthia said, that this is something that is beneficial not only to the employees who need to do that wholeness, that whole thing that we need to do, but it's, it's mm -hmm. beneficial to us because we can see that some of the people that are currently working for the city are tired, mind, body, and soul, spirit, whatever you want to call it. And that basically impacts us. It, it, it impacts us on the customer service that we receive. It impacts us on the timeliness of that customer service. So to be able to give them something that will help them regenerate, you know, repower their sales is beneficial to the city of Crestview. So we thank you for um, listening to that and to recommend that to the mayor for signatures. So and thank you, you for, for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Anyone else in the audience? I can make comments to the council. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none, we'll now go to comments from our mayor, which is in France. He said, <laughs> bonjour. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll now go with the council and we'll start. No, I don't have any comments. Thank you. I do have a few this evening, and if uh, I can get an update on, have we made it anywhere on the itinerant vendor? Um, ordinances and working through on like a workshop or how to sure we we actually have been working through the itinerant vendor um i don't know if this council remembers but before it was adopted i asked you guys not to adopt it <laughs> um when i was sitting in the audience as a as a as a um just a visitor uh it we've, we've been through uh staff has been through the itinerant vendor i've spoken also with the uh car dealers which is what actually started that process um we we're looking uh, sometime in october and november to bring uh, before the council for for a workshop several things inside of our what we call the administration portion of the code uh, Which would address those types of temporary permits and things like that So at that time, I think is when we will actually have a workshop on it There is a lot of stuff in there that makes it extremely difficult difficult to navigate um, So we're, we're going to be recommending to cut a whole bunch of that quite frankly uh, But I didn't want to do it in little pieces and we've had so much going on. I needed to get past the budget. So uh, it's just been, um, uh, we just haven't gotten it to you yet. Okay. Well, one more. I am going to sure. make that workshop a little bit more difficult on you. Okay. Um, awesome. This next has to do with economic development, commerce, government overreach. Um, some of the reasons home rule is actually used against us um, and some stigmas that come from just local stigma. Um, we currently have an alcohol ordinance that is technically out of regulation with state law. There's currently case law from the Supreme Court that actually backs up the opposite of what we have. And I do think that it's something we need to look at. I know it's came before the council before. Um, I actually asked um, Mr. Bulldog and the staff prepared a, a map that I can lay over the podium or if you want to show it right now even that overlays where the the churches outlie along our commercial corridor and with that being said you cannot have a restaurant even that serves 51 percent of food and non-alcoholic beverages cannot serve even beer or wine within that 500 foot bubble um, and that is what is out of uh, it, out of a line so they provision says 500 feet from schools and the crest city of crestview has taken it beyond what the state allows by adding churches into that mix so i just ask that when we go into these workshops coming up that this is one that is closer to the top because there is some liability for us even it, okay. it it's the reason tallahassee is trying to take home rule from us or okay. take things from us is because of those and then just the commerce religion and commerce need to mesh in, in my eyes okay 
So, so <coughs> when uh, when I got asked for the map, we ass I assumed that this conversation would occur. So we did some research, and uh, so that the rest of the council is aware and the public. Um, I believe that the the section of the code that you're referring to is there's a section in our code that says that uh, if you even if you have a bona fide restaurant, um, if it's located within 500 foot of a religious uh, facility or a church, I think the term is actually used as church uh, in our code that in order to serve beer or wine, you have to receive permission from the church. And there's actually very specific case law that makes that illegal. Um, so, so yes, sir, we, we will do that. Um, and what I think because of the nature of it and, and having talked to staff on some of the history of it, we'll probably set up a workshop specifically to discuss uh, that topic so that we can run down, um, you know, what, what exactly that means for us, um, you know, as it relates to <coughs> pursuing businesses and, and, and the things that you've expressed concern for. So, yes, sir, we will we'll, we'll set that up in October-ish. If that's all right, that'll give us enough time to, to put together and work together with the city attorney to determine what is in there that has to come out and then provide you options on the rest. Thank you. Did I have one? Uh, I don't have a whole lot. I just wanted to say that the development staff, Mr. Schoen and, and the others have done a great job on presenting this material to us. It's very complex. And we sometimes we uh, and the mayor usually explain to some and he may be able to think about that. Sometimes it looks like we're just going through it, but we've received this information a few days in advance and have looked at looked at all of it. And uh, it was a lot of stuff today. So uh, uh, we appreciate the clarity which you presented it to us on the in the packages and things like that. So yeah, dovetail that was a fun weekend reading all this stuff. It was, it was a fun two days going through, through it, that's for sure. Uh, but um, yeah, and uh, you know, really, I'm glad that, that. Uh, the lady spoke about the EAP program because we want to take care of our our employees and uh, and I've known several people that's been taken care of through the EAP when something has happened. So I'm very excited about what we're doing for the city and I see Miss Elisa is in the audience and I'm excited for our recreation department. Uh, when is the next uh, movie coming up? Next week. Next week. So we don't want to forget. We want to announce that, that that's coming up and it's going to be it's, it's, doors open at six or earlier? Movie starts at seven and starts at six. Okay. So be sure to be out there and it's next a week from Saturday, right? Yes, okay, so uh, come on out and, and uh, have a good time and just just it builds camaraderie with the community and it's a good thing. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for that. Um, and if you don't want to watch the movie, I'll be there in Athens, our mayor. He'll be in France. <laughs> they haven't come look and talk to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be I'll be leaving uh, Clearwater that morning to make sure I get here in time for that movie. Uh, and and, and uh, greet our, our citizens. So y'all come on out and, and look at me. Mm -hmm. um, I only have one thing that uh, I find I found of interest just today. Um, we had Northwest Florida League of Cities. I mean, Okaloosa County League of Cities, which encompasses all nine cities in, 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 in Okaloosa County. And, and I, I'm a board member on that. Uh, we had uh, Commissioner Ketchel was there today. And our, our new business today was was the homeless issue, and she came in a little bit late, so we we're throwing questions around, not not knowing answers and anything. But but what, one thing I did find that there's an uptick in homelessness. Um, Niceville ha say their their issue is growing, uh, Fort Walton issue is growing. I really don't know the status of of our city here, but I'm sure it's growing. But she brought something very interesting to my attention and to all of us that we were not aware of, starting. Uh, the first of, of the year, for January 1st, there will be a, a center that's going in, in Fort Wallen Beach. Uh, and I asked her, could I disseminate this to the public? She said, sure. She, she wants to make everybody aware of it. And uh, January 1st, they're beginning a center in Fort Walton. And um, it's going to in include uh, mental health I issues with it. It's going to be contracted to uh, Bridgeway. And what really amazed me, which I didn't know, and uh, <laughs> I found out a lot of other people didn't know that in two years, their plans are to put a 150 bed unit up here in Crestview for the homeless. So uh, we, the city hadn't heard anything about it, so we don't know if you're looking at city land, the county's got plenty of land, 
they, she, in the Crestview, she might be talking about the Crestview area, but I'm sure if they were talking about putting right here in the city, uh, our city manager would have heard something about it. But she did tell me that uh, in two years that th that's that's your plans. Uh, she didn't say the county was paying for it. So I don't know if it's, uh, <laughs> and, and we know the city's not paying for it. Um, mm -hmm. So you uh, be here more than that. She's going to discuss it more at our uh, Augusta County League of City dinner on October the seventh, I think, in uh, Val P. So that that was uh, what I found pretty interesting. Other than that, I, I'm glad uh, I'm getting comments from the way the city's moving. Uh, they they're really appreciative that the efforts that our, our new city manager and our mayor and our council is making towards moving the city forward, and we're hoping that. Everyone will try to catch on to the new view. If there's any questions, which there are questions by what I see on Facebook and comments, that we know people need to be informed, um, that they contact our city manager. Uh, we're paying him to answer the questions. Uh, if, if he doesn't have the answer, no, feel free to call on one of our council persons. And uh, that's all I have to say. We'll go around the table right quick. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> We're almost around the table. Madam thank Clerk. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I don't have anything. I just want to thank everyone for the uh, expression of the condolences of the loss of my father last two weeks ago. And also, uh, on the 21st, we not only have for the uh, families and kids, but we also have a Main Street Festival downtown uh, on October the, on September the 21st down on the south end, which will be a lot of fun, too. So if you... Don't want to watch the movie? Come yes. to the October Fest. Okay. All uh, right. That was City Clerk's report. Do we have anything from our attorney update? No, the only thing I would uh, say is that we, we identified the alcohol ordinance uh, recently, probably part of, of that discussion. We also had some other things uh, on the staff level that we were looking to change on that particular ordinance. So I know that one's coming back. And I'd almost forgot, you know, with a city manager, I don't have to say, let's go around the table, because he's speaking for all departments. So now we'll ask for, uh, uh, that, that I like that too. City manager's report. <laughs> well, I am, I am gonna bring the chief up here in just a minute. Um, you can start making your way up this way if you want. But before I do that, there's a couple of things that I did want to update you on. Uh, first of all, you guys have received notice, I think, of a ribbon cutting for work to begin at PJ Adams. You should have received that in your email that has been postponed based on weather. So you're looking at me like you don't have it. Well, when it does actually happen, you'll have it. <laughs> so, so, okay. Mr. Uh, uh, and that's one reason why they postponed it because, did y'all get notice? Okay, that's what, one, one of the main reasons. It, uh, there was some type of lapse in okay. getting communication. That's why they're changing the date for the P.J. Adams ribbon cutting. Okay, but we will be cutting the ribbon and we will be doing P.J. Adams. Um, also, uh, there's a couple of things that I would like to get consensus from the council on tonight. Um, as you know, we've, we've been moving really quickly on some projects, uh, and as the opportunity to meet and address needs that arise, we've been um, kind of addressing them as they go. Um, and, and recently, or if you pay any attention to uh, the comments, which I know you all do, uh, one of the main complaints that we get is there's nothing for the kids to do. Uh, there's nothing for the kids to do and they want me to open a bowling alley and all kinds of other things well um, Obviously, those are those are private business endeavors that we don't do But when we have an opportunity to partner with a, a group to do to provide more activities that the youth may participate in I always think it's a good idea and so recently we had a group um, that is a, it's a sanctioned club for RC remote control cars um, come to us and ask us if we would partner with them on a location to build a track for them to hold tournaments. And uh, Mr. Steele <laughs> met with them, and then I've met with them, and, and we've uh, Mr. Steele identified a piece of property that is located uh, <coughs> right next to um, Fire Station 3, uh, which is right there in the middle of town off of Brookmead. Uh, and, and just behind or beside it, there's a really nasty yard to the left, it's it's uh, it's not nasty because it's our, our, our it used to be a bar. It's nasty. It used to be a bar <laughs> pit uh, where we would take stuff out of it. And over the years, you know, it's 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 lived its life uh, for us to extract uh, clay and stuff from it. And so it's it, it now just collects uh, things that we are going to soon dispose of. 
And so uh, that property was sitting there with no real use on it. And so when, when I uh, asked Mr. Steele to meet with this team and come up and identify a location for this RC park, he, this is the, the location that he identified. And it is a great idea. Um, I'll be happy to take any of you all there individually um, to, to drive it and take a look at it. But, but what they're asking us to do is to consider a partnership with them where we clean that space, up, a portion of that space up, and provide it to them uh, so that they can then build a track that will be open to the public and used by them for their RC cars. Uh, Mr. Steele, do you remember the size of the, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but what was the size of that? It's 190 by 75. Okay, so, so that's the, the area of the space that we're gonna use. Yeah. Feet, right, and so, um, but as we begin to look at it, we really started to vision, hey, this is an underutilized piece of property dead in the center of town. And so one of the other comments that I get uh, and so first of all, what, before I move on to the next step, what I'm looking for is before I continue to progress and work out the details of some sort of inter, interlocal agreement or memorandum of understanding with the attorney and begin to engage him to do that, I want to make sure that I have consensus of the council to move forward. So it, uh, the question is, if I can utilize that piece of property to uh, bring this park forward and then you know protect all of our interests and all that stuff, is that something that you're interested in? Yes. <laughs> Mr. 100%. Yeah. It's going to make uh, the chief's job a little bit easier if we give idle hands something to do after school, weekends, uh, or any time available. So between all the different things we can do, that's we need to get the, the youth occupied. Okay. Especially when we can partner with someone else in the community. That's, that's a win-win for everybody. <coughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I think we actually talked about this. My cousin owned one of those uh, many years ago, and it was a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. it had a lot of, attracted a lot of people, and I think it's a great idea. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's great, because that's Atlanta, where it is. It's a, bunch of, it's a piece of crap right now. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I know where it is, you know, so. Uh, it, it serves its, its purpose. not getting to you, so we, you have a consensus <laughs> for us. Now, now with the yeah. infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, what's the vision for it? With the track we are providing the land, they provide the facilities, or is anything like right. safety well, that, and all? It, that leads into the next, uh, the next uh, part of this process. So as far as safety is concerned, we're going to address all that like we do with open parks. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end of the day, we'll have a memorandum of understanding with them about who's responsible for what on the park itself. Uh, as far as construction is concerned, maintenance, that kind of stuff. We'll come up with some sort of agreement. I'll work uh, with uh, the city attorney to, to, to accomplish that. But um, as far as liability and all that, these will be at-risk parks uh, when they're open. When events are being held, they will be responsible for the insurance of the events like they do right now. They had a piece of property right in the middle of Fort Walton, not inside the city limits, but outside the city limits, um, that sold where they had this track. If you, It was over behind the Chick-fil-A there on whatever that road is across from Sam's. And so uh, while I was down there, they had asked me, hey, is there any park locations that we could partner with the city on? And, and unfortunately, down there, they just didn't have the opportunity. Here we have a little bit more space to work with, thank the Lord. So um, so, so what will happen is, as far as operation is concerned, it will be operated like a regular park. Um, and then as far as being open to the public, when they hold events, we'll have something in the memorandum of understanding that gives them priority because they're going to put the work in. But they'll have to ensure all of that we'll figure it out. That's what we got Mr. Holloway for. Um, but caveating into that, uh, we or, or moving off of that, um, when Mr. Steele was out there, he and I both have talked in the past about the need for a skate park. And there is a lot of interest uh, is one of the things that I got right as I got started here. I'm sure that any of you who campaigned, that's the same thing that you heard, uh, was that, that we need more things for the kids to do. And one of the things that came up was the skate park. In addition to that, from time to time, I get really friendly phone calls from people um, where the, when, when they are uh, skating on Main Street, when, yeah. when the skaters are skating on Main Street and, and doing uh, you know, what, what they you know, want to do, um, but don't have a place to do here in the city. If you look around us, the city of Fort Walton Beach has one, Milton has one, Niceville has one. Uh, when you're talking about a population of 25,000, um, it is a park feature that we really should be considering. Uh, so, uh, that being said, uh, we, Mr. Steele had pointed out that this particular piece of property would actually serve for both of those uses. Um, the, on the piece of the property that's closest to Brookmead, 
uh, we have the opportunity, it's a little bit flatter. We have an opportunity to, as we clean it up to do what we call some cut and fill and, and level that off to create a space big enough for a, what we feel is a pretty substantial skate park opportunity. Um, and so I thought, wow, that's really cool. And the next day, uh, as I was um, spending my quality time reading Crestview Citizens for Change, <laughs> I um, came across a, a post from one of our local business owners who has begun an effort to try to fund a skate park. And I thought, what a great opportunity for us to partner with one of our business owners. And uh, Josh is here today, um, and his, Josh and his wife are here today. And, and um, I met with them today, and they are passionate about providing an opportunity for, for our kids and, and maybe even some older kids to hang out and break some knees. Uh, so um, what I'm asking for as far as this is concerned is I'd really like to pursue this idea as well. But I don't want to spend my wheels on something that the council is not interested in. So tonight, again, I'm looking for consensus from the council for me to continue to look at with staff whether this is a, a location that works for that. And if it is, what I think uh, we're kind of at the point to do is for, for me to work with uh, Mr. Steele to engage um, uh, one of our consultants to maybe do a master plan for that piece of property. <coughs> um, now that it's you know done its use, it, it's through the, its use for a storage yard, um, we, we want to turn that piece of property into a fire training facility, this RC park, and potentially the skate park. And so, before I, again, before I go off into working on that, I wanted to make sure that the council agreed and felt like it was a priority for us to do that. Uh, so I'll, I'll take comments or questions. Comment? Uh, you, you have my support on both. Absolutely. Yes. Another one of win-win when you park yes. with someone in the local community. Yeah. It's another win-win. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have any problems. That sounds great to me. As long as you don't put me, try to put me on a skateboard, we're great. Uh, yeah. We're going to make you do it at the ribbon cutting. So what we'll do from here is then I will, I'll work with Mr. Steele and we'll start trying to really lay that side out just generally. Um, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll work together with, what's the business name? I'm sorry. With Hub City Skate, since they've shown the, the initial interest in it, we're going to work with them. And we're also going to reach out and create a, a committee. I did this, I worked on, not did, but I worked on the skate park in Fort Walton. And one thing I figured out is I don't know anything about skate parks. And so um, what I want to do is put a group of people who use it together to determine how to do it. And then it'll come to funding. And so we're going to have to figure out how we do that. They've started fundraising. It's hard to fundraise when, when there's nothing to fundraise towards. So uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to work with... Uh, the city attorney to establish a um, a protected place where where funds can be allocated or can be donated to be specifically used for that park and if this group wants to pursue that and go out and do fundraisers we're going to figure out a way to do it legal and protect it and make sure that everybody's protected in the process so you'll get to approve any kind of funding but that's that's kind of where we're going with it that's what this consensus gives us uh, before i hand it over to uh, chief mccosker is there any qu any more questions for me just a comment uh, I appreciate your efforts and, and, and our staff efforts toward this. The, the citizens, as you know, have been saying we need more places. Uh, we're making a great effort, in, in my opinion, towards trying to accommodate those with the funds that we have or the funds that we anticipate. So uh, my hat's off, and I think the, the youth will have something to do once this is completed in another area that they can utilize. Yeah, one, one thing I will say, uh, too, is that for me, it's very exciting to see so much citizen engagement mm -hmm. on stuff like this. Mm -hmm. A lot of times uh, you get it where the citizens want you to do something, but, you know, I, I, we have limited funds. And so now mm -hmm. if we've got a group, two different groups that are interested in doing something, and in both cases, you're talking about regional type activities that will bring people to the area, put people in hotels, <coughs> put, you know, have them. Um, eating at our restaurants, that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. all right, before, uh, so that we can get done sometime before tomorrow, I did want to turn over uh, a little bit of my time to Chief McCosker. As you all are well aware, we've uh, been struggling with some uh, uh, shootings, uh, and they seem to be, the number of shootings in the area seem to be climbing. And so um, he got... He got appointed, got sworn in, and two hours later was dealing with his first one. Mm -hmm. So I wanted him to kind of update you all, because I know we're all concerned about what's going on, and, and I want you to know what we're doing. And since that's what we hired him for, I figured I would let him do the update. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Council Members, Ma Madam Clerk. Um, just want to, uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to go ahead and lead the uh, Crestview Police Department. Um, it was truly an honor to be selected, um, and I, I say that because even though I'm here to talk about crime, it's that fresh <laughs> that, that I've just been selected. 
So uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, point out a couple of things that, that are very important. The, the first thing is, is, is something that you can see for yourself and you already know is, is that the Crestview community is a very vo involved community and that's going to make uh, my job and the uh, men and women of the Crestview Police Department's job a, a lot easier uh, in the uh, up and coming uh, weeks and months and, and even years. Um, Unfortunately, uh, shortly after my selection, there was an uptick in the crime in, in uh, part of our uh, community. Um, I will say that I, I've had the opportunity to uh, tour that entire area already. I've also got, had the opportunity to meet with many members of the uh, community uh, to, to listen to their concerns, uh, not only about crime, but other development within in their community. Um, so. Within literally within hours of being sworn in, I, I was on the crime scene of the, uh, the the first shooting where people actually were uh, injured, and, and that's very concerning. Uh, but I got to see firsthand, and one of the things that, that I wanted to relate to you is is that not only did I get to see firsthand w where it happened and, and hear what what had happened, but I also got to see the the men and women of, of our department, and then also the other lo local law enforcement agencies uh, how they react to uh, that that type of situation. So we had members of the sheriff's department there and, and the uh, state troopers there and, and all of this within uh, minutes of the actual crime occurring and, and I could tell you firsthand this is that that easily within 15 minutes of the incident happening uh, we, we had names and directions to go ahead and start going with, um, forward on it and that's what our investigators were doing and, and continue to do um, unfortunately um, before people were put in jail we've had another incident um, that happened while again I, I'm still try, trying to, to, to get my family here and uh, that happened while I was out of town I, I was able to pick up the phone and, and call the, the uh, contacts that, I, that I've made in, in a short period of time and, and was able to actually uh, be in contact with the uh, sheriff's office uh, specifically uh, Commander uh, Ward and speak to him and and, and and he, he took my phone call on the weekend and we, we had a meeting today to go ahead and discuss some of the upcoming things. Uh, I, I do want to go ahead and, and one, be brief, but two, also let you know that we are working on several things, uh, not only as the police department, but also with, with the uh, sheriff's office together. And, and again, for the safety reasons uh, of our men and women, I, I don't want to go into specifics of that, but uh, we, we have formulated a plan and discussed some, some steps that we, we can go ahead and do and, and address the crime issue. One of the things that we always have to do as a police department is, is we, we always have to uh, be concerned and be aware of the communication aspect of it. And that, that's something that, that I've been speaking with my, the command staff at, at the police department with. So uh, in, in a very near future, uh, you will start to see some of those uh, efforts to improve the communication. You'll see that uh, in our social uh, media. You'll, you'll see that um, in our face-to-face -face interactions with, with not only the, the uh, um, area of town where, where they're in receiving the uh, uptick in crime but also throughout the community and, and so we, we have uh, very specific things that we're going to be doing um, in the very near future with that and then I also have a, a meeting with the state attorney's office and the leaders of the state attorney's office uh, on this Wednesday and, and so we'll be discussing that as well as uh, um, diversion programs and other things that the Crestview Police Department can be a par part of. Um, I, I can assure you that that whether I was here or not, the, um, the men and women in the Crestview Police Department had have the skills and abilities and desire to go ahead and address these type of issues, and and, and they, they were uh, moving forward w without any direction, um, without me having to say we need to do this or need to do that. And then also, I know um, from the conversations I've had, not just with Commander Ward, but other members of, of the, um, the Sheriff's Department, is, is that we have full support uh, of the Sheriff's Department. And so, so I, I feel very confident that, that we will be addressing, one, the crime issue very quickly, but two, we will also be uh, um, improving our uh, support within the community and our communication within the community. If you have any specific questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. If there's something that I feel is uh, law enforcement sensitive, I, I, I'll just uh, defer to a private conversation later. No, no questions. Just a comment. Yeah. Just, just one comment, uh, and uh, I might have got it from Mr. Bullock, I can't remember. I, I, I had a, a citizen from Tallahassee send me a, a message, because, uh, you know, they, they got the word, well, what's, uh, what are y'all doing to, for, about, about the stuff in Crestview? And, you know, and, I, I looked at it and I said, yeah, you got a valid point there. So I told him, I said, well, 
One thing I know we're doing right away, we're increasing the patrols in that area. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct. We, and the other thing that was here. that um, I said we need to make sure that we get citizen involvement of what's going on because somebody knows something that's not saying anything. So we need the citizens in, in these particular areas. Uh, they, know, they know the area, they know the people, and they know more than what they're telling. So I'm encouraging them to reach out to our, our force to make our areas safer uh, for all citizens. That's all my comment. Thank you, sir. Any other? I was just going to say, um, welcome to Crestview. Uh, family and everybody settled in. No, they, they, they're yet. still, they're still, this will be the last weekend that they're uh, uh, Cody residents and then we'll, we'll be Crestview residents. Um, well, I already am, but they, they'll be uh, Crestview residents starting uh, uh, next Wednesday. Okay, yeah, my comment is just that whatever you need just I'm in support of it uh, we I'll need to know. quell mm -hmm. the situation before it gets any worse and, and you know coming on you, you've got a blank canvas and, and you know, great resume so 100% behind you just in a, in a hurry word one of the things that, that I didn't mention uh, that I think is very important it's very important to the uh, citizens that, um, and community members to, to know is is that um, whatever organization I, I'm a part of, I, I firmly believe that uh, the level of um, service that, that the citizens are going to get, I, I think as the leader of an organization, that, that it's important that the citizens know that I, I uh, trust my family's safety with that same level of service. And, and, and that's why it's important for me not, not only to, to have went ahead and received this job, but also to go ahead and make sure that, that everyone knows that, that we are residents of, of Crestview. So the, the same level of service that and protection that you're receiving for your family is the same level of protection and service that, that I entrust my family to. And, and I, I think that's important for everyone to know that it's not just a, a job where I ship in and, and go ahead and, and, and do my thing and then ship back out. It, it, it's actually, I'm a member of the community as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I have a comment. Uh, this is going to be off this subject to another subject uh, that was really bothersome to me, especially one day when I drove around town about three, three, three different times during the day. Terrible accidents. Uh, I would uh, like to see some kind of uh, community outreach or something to try to curb that. Um, there was just, you know, I, th I think that people are, uh, I know you're watching me both say, I think people are getting too big of a hurry. And we just need to have some kind of education because it was really it was really bad that day. I think I emailed Mr. Boldak and the mayor on that situation that day, and uh, I'd like to see something addressed on that too. Uh, that that happens more often than even the horrible things that's been happening, which both needs to be addressed. But then I'm sure. You know, I want both of them to be addressed if possible. Yeah, community outreach and, and education campaigns is going to be um, something that we concentrate a, a lot on. And, and unfortunately, we, um, we, we are law enforcement, the last word, enforcement. I, I mean, so we will do everything we mm -hmm. can to go ahead and gain voluntary compliance um, mm -hmm. before we actually even get to that step. But, but you, you, you should see, uh, um, in, in addition to what you were already receiving, you should do, see a, a very noticeable uptick and the uh, level of communication, which includes, uh, you know, traffic and, and, and general safety a, a, as well, mm -hmm. um, not, not just on specifically, oh, we have this crime trend happening, but, but mm -hmm. uh, again, w whatever we can do to go ahead and prevent uh, crime and accidents prior to, you, you'll start to see us utilize different techniques for that. Uh, oh, that, that you. we, you know, again, they, 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 they aren't all brand new, but, but again, it'll be something that you'll see on, on a more frequent basis. Well, uh, we all like a sheep need to be told to, what to do again sometimes. So, uh, me too. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. And we thank you and welcome, Chief. Yes. Thank you. If yeah, no other comments, mm -hmm. um, no, any comments? No other comments, we do not adjourn. Everything, right? I like this. <laughs> you got that one down. <laughs> yeah, my ears.